Good morning and welcome to today's pre-recorded service here at All Saints Church. Wherever you are joining us from, you are most welcome. And we hope our time together will be an encouragement to each of us and that through our worship we'll be drawing closer to God. Today we continue with our series on everyday faith, what it means to be a Christian Monday to Saturday as well as Sunday. And in particular today we'll be looking at the subject of being a messenger for the gospel, what it means to have words to share our faith in our everyday lives. So as we begin, let me offer an opening prayer and then we will sing our opening hymn together. Almighty and living God, we come before you for our service today in expectation and delight to hear your word and to sing your praises. Help us to bring all of who we are to you rejoicing in your presence, receiving your love, and finding the inspiration to live our lives as your people in this world. Be with us, we pray, in our worship today, through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. We sing our opening hymn, Crown Him With Many Crowns. Oh! 
Everyday faith is about connecting with God each day, in the thoughts we have, in the things we do, and in what we say, in recognising that we don't always get it right either. Psalm 61 says, Truly my soul finds rest in God, my salvation comes from Him. How wonderful then that there is a place for us in God's presence. However, we've come to our worship today. Let us start by confessing anything that is unsettling us, offering it to God, knowing he is our resting place. Let us begin with a moment of quiet. Christ, the light of the world, has come to dispel the darkness of our hearts. In his light, let us examine ourselves and confess our sins. Most merciful God, Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, we confess that we have sinned in thought, word and deed. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbours as ourselves. In your mercy, forgive what we have been. Help us to amend what we are and direct what we shall be, that we may do justly, love mercy, and walk humbly with you, our God. Amen. May the God of love and power forgive us and free us from our sins, heal and strengthen us by his Spirit, and raise us to new life in Jesus Christ. Amen. Why don't we now turn to song as we think of the gospel being shared around the world as we sing Shout to the North and the South. Again, of our God who reigns on high, 
by his grace again will fly. In the last few weeks, we've been looking at the subject of everyday faith through six M's. Modelling godly character, making good work, moulding culture, ministering grace and love, being a mouthpiece for truth and justice. And today we come to the last of these, being a messenger for the gospel. In the book of 1 Peter, we hear words that resound through our theme today. He says, Always be prepared to give an answer to everyone who asks, to give the reason for the hope that you have. As we approach our talk today, let's take in two readings from the Bible that are about people being called in Jesus' time to share their faith. Thank you to Richard for bringing our readings today. The first reading is from Romans chapter 10, verses 8 to 15. But what does it say? The word is near you. It is in your mouth and in your heart. That is, the message concerning faith that we proclaim. If you declare with your mouth, Jesus is Lord, and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. For it is with your heart that you believe and are justified, and it is with your mouth that you profess your faith and are saved. As scripture says, anyone who believes in him will never be put to shame. For there is no difference between Jew and Gentile. The same Lord is Lord of all and richly blesses all who call on him. For everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. How then can they call on the one they have not believed in? And how can they believe in the one of whom they have not heard? And how can they hear without someone preaching to them? And how can anyone preach unless they are sent? As it is written, how beautiful are the feet of those who bring good news. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The second reading is from Mark chapter 6, verses 7 to 13. Calling the twelve to him, he began to send them out two by two and gave them authority over impure spirits. These were his instructions. Take nothing for the journey except a staff, no bread, no bag, no money in your belts. Wear sandals, but not an extra shirt. Whenever you enter a house, stay there until you leave that town. And if any place will not welcome you or listen to you, leave that place and shake the dust off your feet as a testimony against them. They went out and preached that people should repent. They drove out many demons and anointed many sick people with oil and healed them. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. I wonder how you feel about explaining your faith and being able to explain it to others. In our service today, we've already heard the words, always be prepared to give an answer to everyone who asks you to give the reason for the hope that you have. Be prepared, it says, a bit like in the Scouts. If you're like me, you'll have found helpful things can be said as people give you their encouragements, their answers to questions you've put, maybe in home groups or through friends and family. So this saying has a lot going for it. Always be prepared to give a reason for the hope you have. But here Paul is really speaking of those who are not yet believing in the Christian faith, asking their questions from a different perspective. This is where our everyday faith meets the challenge of inquiry and questioning. When we need to have something to say, to give a reason for the hope we have in Jesus Christ, in our Heavenly Father. Well, the writer of the six M's, Mark Green, has a bit of fun as he starts out on this topic. He says when it comes to sharing our faith, many of us shrink or quiver. Evangelism, he says, is like a trip to the dentist. We know we're meant to go, 
And when we get there, we know we're meant to open our mouths. But we're rather afraid that when we do, extremely unpleasant and painful things will happen to us. In fact, given a choice between sharing our faith and a dental appointment, many of us would rather go to the dentist. The problem is the label of evangelism itself, conjuring up as it does soapboxes and speaking at people. The message of everyday faith says something else, that sharing about your faith is about simply knowing the reason for the hope we have. Having something to say about what faith means to us, why we believe, the difference it makes to us. We can all be then messengers of the gospel. We can all see we have a part to play. But what might it be best to say? I remember a moment from my late teens in the car coming home from a church service when I asked someone, why do you go to church? And the answer came back, because I feel better for it. It refreshes me, makes me feel new again. And for some reason, I've never forgotten that. I'm sure a main part of being a messenger for the gospel is speaking what your experience of God is, what it means to you, and saying it in a way genuine to you. After all, comments like that can lodge in someone's mind. If we feel refreshed on a Sunday morning, well, that may be the spirit at work, the cleansing of our heart, the newness of fellowship that follows. But that explanation can come later. Why do I go to church? Because I feel refreshed. Being a messenger for the gospel is saying something about what God has done for you. What have you seen? How would you say it? What difference does believing in him mean to you? Questions to discuss at home later on, perhaps. But maybe it's about the good and wise friends he's brought into your life. Maybe he's given you a higher purpose in the work you do. Maybe he sustains you in the storm of life. Or perhaps you've once felt a peace that you could never have imagined. Sensed a deep joy you just can't explain. Have you felt spoken to through the Bible? Have things happened when you pray? Maybe it's just the amazing knowledge that he sent his one and only son who died for you, showing his love for you and bringing new life. He's guaranteed you a place in his house and is with you now and forever. When we speak of our experience, it's from the heart and it shows it is real. It's your story, your history. It's what you can say is yours. Now in our first reading this morning, the Apostle Paul is concerned that those who have not grasped the gospel have seen faith to be about rules and laws, good works and religious duty. But what he wants them to understand is that God is a living God and more personal. He says, if you declare with your mouth Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. In sharing our personal story, we witness from the heart and in saying it out, we give the glory back to God. Did you know the word witness appears 23 times in the book of Acts alone? Yet evangelism appears only three times in the whole of the New Testament and is usually reserved for those with a special role. What we offer is witness. Witness is sharing what we know and have seen for ourselves, the things God has done. So what difference does he make to you? What's the reason for the hope you have but being a messenger of the gospel is more than about speaking words. It is, of course, about listening as well. If we are giving an answer to one who asks, then there's a person, a story, with a question behind it. And it is to that which we are responding. Paul himself adds that when we reply, we are to do this with gentleness and respect, keeping a clear conscience. We're not telling, we're not preaching. We're responding, finding where their story is, where our story and God's own story of hope come together. 
Our answers aim to draw out faith and help faith find its place. In this time of the pandemic, there's much need to listen before we share, to listen to where the hurt is, to listen to where the doubt is, to listen to where the questions are, and to respond in words of our experience into that. And this is true for people without faith, as much as people with. For our brothers, nephews, grandparents, friends and neighbours, as well as our church friends. You may have noticed me mention an art exhibition here at All Saints in August. It's a series of paintings that speak of people and God in the pandemic by the artist Rebecca Priestley. Pictures supported by verses from the Psalms and other Bible verses. It's not a usual exhibition, it's a ministry through art and I've seen the exhibition and it's very moving and healing as well. Well, a picture can help us draw out thoughts and words, allow us to express ourselves more deeply and share better, listen and talk. If you find sharing faith hard, then why not come to that and bring a friend along? Who knows what you might be able to share of from your experience and theirs? Well, this draws to a close our last six weeks of looking at our six M's. You probably realise that they all work together, have plenty of overlap. We show grace and mercy as we make good work. We mould culture as we challenge truth and justice. And we model godly character as we speak from our faith. I hope it's been an encouragement to shine a light on everyday faith, to remind ourselves that we do all that we do for God. Paul the Apostle says, how beautiful are the feet of him who brings good news. Feet can be beautiful because of the news they bring. I pray we will be encouraged to do just that. Amen. Take my life and let it be consecrated, Lord, to Thee. Take my hands and let them move at the impulse of Thy love. At the
Father God, we pray for your blessing on all who worship you today, whether in church, in chapel, on radio, TV or online. For all who worship you in secret for fear of persecution and for those who have found their faith extremely challenged because of the pandemic. So we ask that you will be especially close to the grieving, the lonely and the frightened. We pray for the clergy as they seek to reunite congregations which may have become fractured and that we will all enjoy a sense of unity in your love. Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son. Father God, we pray for the leaders of nations who have such difficult decisions to make for the safety and well-being of their peoples. We thank you that our government secured enough vaccine to keep us reasonably safe. And we remember especially those countries where the spread of the, of the virus is rife. India, Africa and South America. Father, we pray that those countries which have vaccines to spare may give to those who have so very little. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Father God, we thank you for our own village and for all who have put themselves out to help others. We thank you for our doctors and nurses, for our ambulance staff, for chemists who have all borne a heavy burden and for our hospitals which are always there in our times of need. We thank you that so many people have stepped forward to help others and for those still in isolation, we pray that help will continue to be forthcoming. We thank you that our shops have remained open and we pray for all our shopkeepers and those who prepare fast food. Father, we thank you so much for the gift of friendship. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Father God, we are only here because someone taught us of your love for us, your gifts of creation and the blessings that you have given us. We thank you for all those who have taught us over the years and we pray for grace that we might have the courage to speak up for you when the occasion arises. We pray too for the Sakabondu Medical Centre in North Zambia, for the doctors and nurses and the remote communities in which it serves. As we, as a church, contribute to its upkeep, may enough money be raised for the new wing it so badly needs. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Father, we pray for all we know who are sick at this time, that each may know the love and warmth of your presence with them. We pray too for their families, that you will give them strength and courage. For those who have died, we give you thanks for lives well lived, and we pray for all who are grieving. May your blessing rest on each one, for in you is hope, healing and joy. Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. And shall we continue with the Lord's Prayer? Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Let's share the peace with one another, thinking of those who we would normally share the peace with in our congregation. Christ came and proclaimed the gospel. Peace to those who are far off. Peace to those who are near. The peace of the Lord be always with you. Thank you for joining us today and thank you to everyone who's helped us in any way. It's really appreciated. And before our final hymn, just a couple of notices. Please do check out the midweek message for everything that's going on. There are a few things coming up at the end of July 
and during August that you may want to save the date for. And the art exhibition that I mentioned in my talk will be on August the 13th and 14th. Again, please check the midweek message for the opening times. Our services next week will be at 10 a.m. in the church and the hall, and also a service online, as usual. Why not, after today's service, listen to the playlist of music and enjoy relaxing over some tea and cake. So thank you once again for being with us, and I'd like to share with you one final verse to encourage us in being messengers of the gospel. In the book of Isaiah it says, How beautiful on the mountains are the feet of those who bring good news, who proclaim peace, who bring good tidings, who proclaim salvation. Let's sing our final hymn together, Go Forth and Tell. to offer a closing blessing. The love of the Lord Jesus draw you to himself. The power of the Lord Jesus strengthen you in his service. The joy of the Lord Jesus fill your hearts. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, Son and Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. Amen. our Lord shall be great in the earth, and all earth's kingdom shall be his dominion. All of creation shall sing of his word. Let every heart, every voice, every tongue join with
fuck with 